This is why I will never use ivermectin on any of my cows or any other animals here on the farm. So a few videos back, I did a whole video about how rotational grazing over a course of a year has changed our pasture. And in that video, what I did is I showed my neighbor's pasture and our pasture. You see, my neighbor's pasture was grazed by the same cows that our pasture was grazed for years and years and years. So it's the best way to show the two different management styles of just turning the cows out and then what we do here with moving the cows every day to a new fresh, you know, grass. And in that video, there's a drastic difference between their pasture and our pasture. I mean, ours is green, ours is lush, ours is tall. Theirs is full of weeds. That's my neighbor's land. Those cows that were on this land were on our side of the fence here where Daphne is. Look at the difference. I mean, when we zoom in, you can really see it. You can really see it. Look at all the dandelions all over the field. I mean, it's covered in it. It's absolutely covered in it. And what does that mean? Again, compaction, compaction, compaction. Not helping, not helping. They're taking nutrients away, not putting them back. And then look at our side here. Full of green, full of grass, full of happy, 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 healthy cows. This is just, I mean, it's an incredible difference that only one year makes. In that video, I said that they were dandelions. I was wrong. They're not dandelions. They probably are something called ground sole. They're not buttercups in that particular paddock. There's some other, you know, we have some on our farm. There's some in the other different parts of the paddock. I thought they were dandelions. I was wrong on that. They're called ground sole if you wanted to look that up. It doesn't matter what it was, the cows won't eat it and it only grows in compacted soil. And in re-watching that video and going out there and seeing for myself again and again and again, I was kind of stumped by something because everything that we're doing here, moving the cows every day, unrolling hay, everything else, everything that we did, there shouldn't have been that drastic of a difference. There just, it shouldn't have been. Everything that I've read, everything that I've learned, every, you know, all the experience that I've had out here, it shouldn't have been that night and day. It should have been better. It should have been better because what we're doing is improving the land. It shouldn't have been that big of a leap. So I got to thinking, I'm going, what did we do or what did the cows do that was just so different that, you know, we're light years ahead of where I thought we were going to be. I've been chewing on it for some time and I was doing some research and then it hit me like a ton of bricks. I figured it out. I, it's not 100%, there's no scientific theory. It's just observation and kind of common sense. You see here, we don't give our cows anything extra if you want to call it. See, we don't give our cows grain, no antibiotics, no warmers, no nothing. They eat hay, grass, and the very occasional now, I barely even do it, alfalfa pellet, which is just a form of grass. And yes, they do get a mineral salt block all the time and, you know, minerals sparingly when it's needed. I was trying to figure out if any of those things had direct impact on the soil because that ground soil or that weed, whatever you want to call it, only grows in compacted soil. And we didn't till up the ground. We didn't, you know, do any kind of aeration. We didn't do really anything to the ground itself rather than move the cows every day. And then I did mow a little bit behind them when the grass got ahead of us. That's it, there's nothing added to it. We just seeded it for the first time about a week ago. So there was really nothing done, nothing spectacular done. There was no synthetic fertilizer added. There was zero, nothing. So what did we do that made our ground less compact? What did we do to make it more fluffy, more aerated, more just looser so you know better plants can grow and they can grow faster? And the answer is what we didn't do. And everybody else around here pours ivermectin or any kind of other chemical warmer on their cows. We don't do that. All we do is how we warm the cows, we warm them, is by giving them Shackley's Basic H soap. And it really doesn't kill the worms inside them if they have any kind of parasites or whatever. It just puts their body into an env environment to where the parasites want to get out and they'll go out in their manure. So it warms them without killing the parasites that just go out of them. You know, it's like, okay, it's trying to grow an orchid at the North Pole. If the orchid had legs, guess what? It would leave. Why? Because it doesn't like that environment. You see, the chemical warmers, what it does is it kills the parasites. And it kills a lot of other things too because what you put on your cows ends up in your soil. The basic age soap, I'm not worried about that ending up in the soil. Why? It's very natural. Go look at the, all the ingredients. It's easy. It's I could drink it and not be in trouble. Why? Because the cows drink it, okay? That ivermectin or that chemical warmer that you use goes into your cow and then it comes out their backside in the manure. What that does is that it doesn't only kill the parasites that are going on inside the cow, but it also kills the ground. It doesn't kill the ground, it kills the microbes, and more importantly, more importantly, this is what makes the whole difference, it kills the earthworms. So you see, as an earthworm, you're not gonna wanna be in an area or go and, you know, devour a manure pat that is full of dewormer, get it, wormer. 
You see, those earthworms are gonna do one of two things, either die or leave. And the earthworms are so incredibly important, not only for the worm castings that they leave behind, they turn that dry matter, that litter, into new soil, but they also aerate it. They go tunnel through it, they make holes. Guess what, that water gets into the holes. They bring in their worm castings, it improves the soil. Guess what, better plants are gonna grow up. So just by deductive reasoning, and you know, there's no test to go see how many worms that we have in our pasture, but that has to be it. The only way for our soil to get that much better, improve that much more, is that we have so many more earthworms than everybody else around here. And let me tell you something, we didn't go buy earthworms, we didn't go, you know, throw a big crate of earthworms out on the pastures. No, they just came back naturally. Why? Because we gave them a place where they can thrive. You see, one, one earthworm, one earthworm can live up to seven years, and in that seven years can produce, reproduce, 1.2 million other earthworms. All right, it's getting kind of windy, so I came into our barn because I want to make sure you guys hear this. 1.2 million earthworms can come from one single earthworm. So how many earthworms do we have here? I have no idea. I really wish there'd be some sort of test that we can go and say, okay, do some sort of scan. Okay, you have this many earthworms on your property because that would be the number to see how well your soil is improving. Is what you're doing better or worse? Because if we could go in somebody's pasture where they've never done anything before, split it in half, one side they don't use dewormer like ivermectin or any of these chemical other things, and on one side they do. Go do a scan, you can see, I bet you anything, if that scan were possible, the one with the dewormer, the one that they pour on everything, with the earthworm level, the, that earthworm count would go down. And that one where they don't do anything, that earthworm level will go up. And when you're able to aerate the soil like that, that's why we have the pastures that we're developing here. I mean, they're not perfect. They're not perfect yet because we've only been here a year. Watch what happens in two years, three years, five years, 10 years, 50 years. In 50 years, you're gonna come back and I bet you anything, the grass is gonna be this tall. It'll probably be mostly native grasses, which, you know, they outgrow Bermuda or anything else that you can put out there for your cows. They're more drought tolerant and they're a lot better for them too. So you might be asking, how do you do we get away without using the chemical warmer? Well, in my opinion, I don't think we have to. We do the basic age soap, especially when the animals come to the farm because you know, I try and get a feel for where they're coming from, but you just don't know. So I just want to kind of start off with a clean slate. And I do it my way in the way that a lot of other grass fed producers do with basic H soap. And, but how we can get away without really using any wormers is a couple reasons. One, you have to understand the parasite cycle. When the manure comes out of the cow, okay, in four days, that's when the flies appear. Boom. But in 12 days, in 12 days, that's when the parasites appear. So in order for a cow to ingest a parasite from its own manure, it has to be eating next to that parasite within, I believe it's 12 to 15, maybe 18 day, 18 day period. So as long as you move them away from there during that time that the parasites are alive, they're gone. Second thing, where are the parasites at? They're near the bottom. They're near the bottom of the plants. They're in the soil-ish area, okay? So what we do is we have them graze off really just the top third, maybe at most half of the plant. They're never going right next to the ground and eating like that. So they're not picking up parasites that way as well. The third thing is our cows are mostly longhorns. We have 21 cows, 19 of them longhorns. Why is that important? The longhorns, because of their history about how they got out and how they were wild for hundreds of years, have developed a parasite resistance. Let me talk on that for a second. That should show you, if you're using ivermectin or any of these other poron wormers, what you're doing is you're giving a crutch to your cows. You're making them weaker, 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 weaker. It's like, you know, it's like with a human. If you take antibiotics too many times, they become less effective. And what you're doing is you're compromising the cow's immune system to where they're not able to fight off those parasites naturally. Sure, do the longhorns pick them up? Do sheep and dolly, who are our Charlotte Angus crosses, pick up parasites? I'm sure they do, but because they haven't been wormed, 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 they know, their body already knows how to fight it off and pass it really quickly. And then in our system, it's only just maybe a little bit, if any at all. But the Longhorn and their history shows you, shows you plain as day, because they're as close to the thing to a wild cow as you can possibly get. With their, their parasite and their disease resistance being way higher than any other cow, do your research, look it up, don't believe me on it. That just shows you that natural selection or letting the cows, you know, fight it off themselves. Guess what? works. And as we keep running this farm, we're not going to be doing any of that. It doesn't matter if it's ducks, if it's chickens, if it's geese, if it's our alpacas. We don't warm them either. We give them the basic age so when they first got here, they're perfectly fine. We'll never do goats, but if we had goats, do the same thing. And even with sheep as susceptible to parasites as they are, we wouldn't do that. Why? 
move them away from their parasites, break that parasite cycle, build up their immune system, and let the animal do what it does best, and that's heal itself. Just like our body, the best way for our body to you know, get fixed is not by a medicine or whatever, but it's for us to heal itself. And it's actually really funny. I don't want to get into this at all, but you go look up ivermectin. The first thing that you see, ivermectin in COVID, ivermectin killing the coronavirus, ivermectin in this. It's the go-to thing for everybody that, you know, does it work? Get out of here. But the point being is letting the cow be the cow, letting the llama be the llama, letting our ducks be our ducks. Guess what? Over thousands and thousands and thousands of years, nature has shaped them to be able to avoid and fight off those kinds of things. We just have to be able to put them in position to do it. And before all the hate starts saying, I don't know what I'm talking about, go back to the city, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I said it. You don't have to go do it, okay? I know you, some of you guys are going to completely agree with me. Some of you guys are going to completely think I'm an idiot. But the proof is in the pudding. Our pastures look amazing. We're overstocked compared to our area. And our cows doing fantastic, so don't tell me I'm wrong. So if you've made it this far in this video without getting your panties in a bunch or getting triggered, you know what? Hit that subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell so you can get notified when you put up new videos. Hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and drop a comment if you like, alright? Till next time, see ya. Bye. Come on, cow cows, come on! Come on, cows! Come on, cow cows, come on! Come on, cows! Come on, cow cows, come on! Come on, cows! Come on, cow cows! Come on! Come on, cows! Come on, cow cows! Come on! Come on, cows! Come on, cow cows! Come on! Come on, cows! Come on, cow cows! Come on! Come on, cows! Come on, cow cows! Come on! More cows. More cow cows, come on. 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 And we have a llama in our front yard. Elvis, you gotta go. Come on, dude, you're being dumb lately. I always brag about how smart you llamas are. Elvis, come on. Come on, bro. Let's go. Go down the other way. Let's go. There we go. Go. You'll figure it out. Ugh. Come on, llama. Come on, Elvis. Let's go. Let's go, Elvis. You made a wrong turn, bro. Come on, bud. There we go. Come on, llama. Come on, llama. You're almost there. His buddy's going with them. There we go. Make a left. There we go. Good job, llamas. <laughs> He's all mad at him. You left me. You left me. <laughs>